Closed captioning for the Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the tastes, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on the Casey Malone Show. Today, we head to Columbiana to visit Birdfish Brewery, and we enjoy low country food in the taste of Nolan's food truck. But first, I'm joined by my friend Jill to make my new favorite salad. Well, it took some bribery, but I finally got my girlfriend, uh, Jill Landau, into my kitchen. Hello. She prepared this farrow salad for a party a few weeks ago, and I've been making it consistently every week. I absolutely <laughs> love this recipe. You know, I cook once, and <laughs> everybody's so shocked. <laughs> <laughs> well, you really hit it out of the ballpark with this one. Thank you. You know, it, it could be vegetarian. Uh, it's extremely healthy. Yes, it is. It is my first introduction to farro. Oh, okay. Which is a really nice grain. It's got a nutty texture. It's filling. And let's talk about um, now our nutritional okay. benefits from well, this. Well, I know that one half cup of farro has seven grains, is, excuse me, seven grams of protein. Yes. So it's it's really healthful for you. Less than 100 calories okay. in that cup. Sounds right. And it also has, I have notes, magnesium, <laughs> niacin, zinc, and iron. And it's loaded with antioxidants. Yes. And of course, a lot of fiber. Right. So it's really good to get you going. <laughs> and you're just going to love this. And it's filling. You know, it really expands, and we've tweaked the recipe that you found. Yes, I found the recipe um, in Jessica Seinfeld's cookbook called Food Swings, mm -hmm. and we kind of changed it up a little bit to, you know, give it a little bit of a... Well, to personalize it, because there's certain yeah. flavors that I thought were missing, and I think, you know, you added the onion, and I love that green onion addition. Yeah. Um, I've added this, um, my new herb called... Lovage, and I had this growing in my garden. My friend gave me the plant, and I started using it. And it's very, um, it's warm and has a little bit of spice, and it has a very strong celery taste. They don't really sell this in the stores, but if you get the stock from um, like celery, celery and cut the leaves, you it can will serve it. that. And then instead of boiling my um, farro in water. I like a stock. I think that's a great idea. You know, this yeah. is chicken stock, but if you want to go total vegetarian, you can use vegetable stock or even beef stock. But it really, um, I think it just adds another dimension to the flavors. And I, I cannot wait to share this with everyone. And let's I appreciate go. you coming in. So let's go over this recipe list. <laughs> and uh, we'll get you all the ingredients and then we'll start making Jill's farro salad. For this recipe, you'll need one cup of farro, three cups of water, chicken or vegetable stock, one head of broccoli thinly sliced, six radishes halved and thinly sliced, two green onions chopped fine, white and green parts included, one half cup basil leaves cut into ribbons, one quarter cup flat leaf parsley chopped, one quarter cup lovage chopped fine, one chunk of Parmesan cheese, Dressing, you'll need one quarter cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice, one half cup of extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper to taste. So get a fairly large dish right. to mix this. And we just pulled this off of the stove. Right, you cook the farro for about 20 to 30 minutes until it's soft. And then you just, you drain it and you run some cold water out over it. So to shock it so right, it's nice. So you don't have to wait um, for it to cool. Okay, so right. we'll start with the base of the farro. Right, we're going to add the chopped broccoli, which you chop the stems also, right? Really, yes. really thin. Really thin. If you have a mandolin, but look, you know, I think a lot of people waste that, but look at that. As and it as gives it a nice crunch. Right, as long as they're really thin, you can use them. And then the, the six radishes. Love that. Love the radishes. And this is such, it's a crunchy salad. It really is good. And then I would add the green onion. And then the herbs. The basil's nice. 
love parsley, and you're gonna love my lavish. I certainly <laughs> hope so. <laughs> Okay, and then you mix it, and are you going to make, make the dressing? I am going to make the dressing. All it is, is, you know, about third to a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. We'll get that going here. We'll add the lemon juice, and then salt and pepper. You know, salt is very, very important here. And then fresh ground pepper. And that's it. It's a very easy vinaigrette. And I usually wait to put the chunked Parmesan cheese on after the dressing. Now, I also like, you know, the Locatella, the um, Romano cheese. So there we go. Blend it well. And we're just going to pour the whole thing over it. Great. And I do think it's good if you let it sit for a few hours in the I, fridge, I agree. you know, because then the, the flavors really meld together. But I mean, look at what a beautiful, healthy salad that is, and it's That's loaded it. with taste. Well, Jill, for the pairing, I know you're a fan of the kava. Yes, I am. And you know, bubbly goes with absolutely everything. And I don't think Indeed. you've tried this one. No, I haven't. It's from uh, Cordonu, and it is called Anna, and they also make a pink, but this is a Blanc de Blanc. <gasps> Great. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for fun. coming you for and making me. this. Mm. It is so light and refreshing, just like your salad. Yes. So let's give it a try. What okay. do you think? You haven't had it with the stock yet, have you? No, it's really good. Mm. And the lavage. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It was fighting you on that. I'm not sure. No, I think you added too much, but it really is good. Make this once, and honestly, even though it is so healthy, everybody's gonna love it. It really is delicious. So for the recipe, just go to my website, caseymaloneshow.com, and look for Jill's Faro, Faro, not sure of that proper pronunciation, <laughs> either. salad, and you'll find it right there. I really, really thank you. Thanks. You're gonna love it. When I want local flavor, I watch the Casey Malone Show. Hey, Phil, you were not kidding when you said you were updating this patio. I love the furniture. I love the shade. I mean, this is going to be the best place to party all summer long. Say hello summer. And you know what? We want people to feel like they're on vacation when they come to the magic tree and hang out on our patio. I mean, this really does have a great vibe. And I love this drink menu. I mean, for summer, the mermaid water, the creamsicle martini. And then you're going to have the bands out here, too. Live music all summer long. We have our summer drink menu. Great food here, as you know. And, uh, you know, put on your shorts, put on your flip-flops, and come on out and hang out with us. That's right. Hey, and you know, you can't count on Mother Nature, but you can always count on the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. Cheers! Cheers, Casey. Here at the Upstairs, we cater to everyone. When you come through the door, I treat you as though you're my friend. So there's all kinds of options here at the Upstairs. There's something on that menu for everyone. Great food, friendly service, very clean restaurant. There's a lot of restaurants, a lot of good restaurants in our community. So I always feel honored when someone comes here. I want everybody coming through that door to leave here with a good experience. Part of growing up in Youngstown is growing up with Rolly Brothers Markets. Even friends who have moved out of town come to shop and say hi when they're home for a visit. And my family has always shopped at Rolly's, and today they are still my favorite grocery store. My recipes depend on the best ingredients, and that's why I get them at Rolly's, where you'll always find the freshest food at the best prices. Rooley Brothers is a proud sponsor of the KC Malone Show. The quality that customers have come to expect is true local flavor. Five Buck Burger Mondays at Sadie's Place, inside the Best Western, Route 46, Austin Town.
Well, around town, you've probably seen the Taste of New Orleans food truck. And Alan Franco is the proprietor. And let me tell you, if you want some low country food, this is the man to see. What made you start a food truck in our area? Well, I've, I'm from the area, and I've worked from New York, San Francisco, and everywhere in between at restaurants, country clubs, hotels, or whatnot, and wanted to get out of it. Wanted to do my own thing, and uh, some friends of mine decided, hey, you know what? Let's help this guy out. Let's get some. Let's do something. So we were going to do a landlocked restaurant, but why put money into somebody else's building? Too much money to build something from the ground. Food truck, and we researched a food truck, and uh, made sense. Well, you know, our market is really not food trucky. Right. You know, Austin, Texas, you hear right. San Francisco. My gosh, they got a whole region, and even like Jacksonville, Florida. I know those are bigger epicenters for for food trucks. How is it going in our region? Well, one of my goals when I became a chef, I wanted to educate people on food, and what better way to educate people on on food with than with a food truck. So trying to just uh, just do the different things. And you know, we've had a great response. People going ooh and all over a food truck. They, you know, they're really, you know, the food, they've never had anything like this. And uh, they re they're we're getting really good reception. We had a great year last year, and uh, it's even better this year. Well, so you're far. classically trained from what, CIA? CIA, went to the Color Institute of America. And how has, you know, the cramped quarters, I mean, that had to be some adjustment learning from a regular kitchen to, you know, these confined quarters. Well, I've worked at a lot of different restaurants, like I said, all over. And, you know, I worked at Station Square in uh, Liberty. And that's where I cut my teeth with Mario at the VIP club yeah. and stuff. And that kitchen's small. And so, you know, the smaller the kitchen, the easier you can get around. You don't have to make too many steps. So we're going to make the shrimp tacos. Oh, those okay. are delicious. So what I do is I use a white corn tortilla. And uh, we lightly fry them. And basically, these are enchilada uh, ta uh, shells. Yeah. And then I just put it over here on the flat top. Now our shrimp, a, a shrimp, like with everything else, is wild caught. I use a 21-23, uh, or 21-25 shrimp. And, and you batter them yourself? They're, uh, they're soaked in buttermilk overnight. And then I do a cornmeal flour dusting on them. Basically, the taco gets a um, chipotle coleslaw, which I make. So there's my, uh, I have a mango corn salsa made with fresh cilantro, uh, mango, tomatoes, and garlic. So then I have uh, a 12 blend seasoning that I make myself. And I just, I toss anything that's in the fryer, we put this, we put there on this, on the seafood. And then this here is the cilantro sour cream that I make. And <laughs> these are amazing. Okay. Mm. Wow, I gotta get a bigger bite. That cilantro sour cream is delicious. Really, really, really good. I can attest <laughs> to Marjorie's rum cake. Okay. Now I had the plain Italian rum cake, Great. and it is, and I am not kidding you, one of the very best cakes I have ever eaten. Thank you. My husband and I were going sliver by sliver. It's the moist. Where did you get that recipe? Marjorie, by the way, is Alan's mother. <laughs> yes. Not <laughs> wife. <laughs> so where does this recipe come from, Marjorie? It's delicious. Actually, my sister gave it to me. And I've been baking it for 30-some years. I mean, it is so delicious. Is that real butter in there? Yes. And yes. now you have made, I've got, I'm trying to try this. I'm going to eat it with my fingers. This is a Bananas Foster rum cake. Yes. Did you make this up? Yes. See the caramel? So moist. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> I love it. This is a fresh strawberry lemonade. It's absolutely amazing. It's got real strawberries, real sugar, and the real lemon juice, not from concentrate, it's pure lemon juice. And it is so refreshing. I mean, I had no idea when you, I drank that, that you made that yourself. 
Yeah. And I mean, what a difference. Yeah. In fresh fruit juice, you know? Um, I'm always looking for help. You know, we got a lot of stuff coming up, so I'm looking for qualified help. Somebody's got a driver's license. <laughs> uh, that's, How is it driving this beast down the uh, road? This is all right to drive, but I need somebody to follow me in my van and stuff when <laughs> we go to different events. Because, you know, we got events where we're gone for three or four days. Now, where do I find out? Because, I mean, you are somewhere seven days a week. Pretty much, yeah. And then you post your schedule where? I post it on Facebook. Every week. Every week. I post it Sunday night. I'm probably going to start taking Sundays off or Mondays, one or the other. But I post it on Sunday night where I'm going to be for the whole week. And we're usually out 11 to 7, 8, 9, 10 o'clock. It depends on the business is and how I'm feeling. Well, I'll tell you, the t it, it really is. Uh, uh, everything I've had is delicious. And then the... The sweet endings with your mom's yeah. uh, rum cakes. I well, mean, it, it's truly a taste of Orleans. Um, you know, I've had people from New Orleans come up here and say it's better than anything they've ever had down there. Um, and I need that because I never think my food's good enough. As a chef, we never think it's good enough. We always want to improve it. But, you know, the, the public is just, I mean, we've served over 15,000 people since we've been open for a year and two months. Elizabeth Bernard. I'd like to give you some free advice. That's right, a lawyer giving free advice. Hard to believe, right? If you're involved in an automobile accident, don't try to handle it alone. Call a lawyer. A lawyer will be your representative, handling the medical bills, insurance forms, and all the red tape. And hiring a lawyer doesn't mean you'll end up in court or have to pay upfront fees. Need a lawyer? Call us. Hi everybody, I'm Danny, owner and operator of Cthulhu Prime Meats, the third generation butcher shop that not only specializes in quality, but also in customer service and doing things in a new technological way. Chris here is our customer service manager. Chris, what do you think that we do differently than any other grocery store? I think we personally not only offer great product, but we can offer a great customer service experience as well. We try and treat all our customers like they were family and friends, ask how their family's doing just so they can keep in touch and give them that customer experience that they deserve. And the nice part is we not only do that inside the store, but also on CthulhuPrimeats.com, where you can buy a lot of our products that we carry here, whether it be grass-fed beef, organic chicken, some of our specialty burgers and bacon. Those are wonderful, and we're gonna provide that same customer experience online as we do in store. Come see us in store or online. Make your next meal one to remember. There's a new standard in assisted living. One that combines comfort, luxury, convenience, and the highest quality expert care. Your loved ones can experience it now in Canfield's premier senior living location. The Inn at Ironwood offers fine dining and amenities such as a concierge, salon, housekeeping, and laundry services. And a truly elegant setting in Canfield. Call us for more information or visit us and take a tour. The Inn at Ironwood, Canfield's premier senior living location. Okay guys, you've just made the most important decision of your life. Now what do you do? Your engagement ring should be as special as your bride-to-be. She deserves better than look-alike inventory. Remember, a bigger price tag does not mean better quality. Real men get real jewelry. It's time to get real. Here's what we offer. A unique selection, two graduate gemologists, two craftsmen to design exactly what you want, and a local family-owned business for the third generation. You know what to do. Get real. Get Kamara. Four for five till six. Happy hour at Sadie's Place inside the Best Western, Route 46, Austin Town. Professional production, local pricing. Contact Shot and Filmworks. Right here on Main Street in downtown Columbiana, you are going to find Bird Fish Brewery. We've assembled most of the crew Jared one, Jared two, and Greg. Josh could not be with us this evening. And uh, I'm telling you, everyone is raving about the beer that you guys are making here. I mean, everybody loves it. And it's right. only available right, right here, here, unless you bring home, what, a growler. Yeah. Tell me, how, how did this all start, you know, your passion for craft beer? Yeah, so it was about seven years ago, Jared's Garage 
We uh, actually started in the kitchen on the stove, bought a beer kit, did that a couple times and with extract and then got away from that and started doing all grain batches and just started buying equipment over the months and years and got to a point to similar setup of what we have here on the commercial stage but um, in, in your garage yeah 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 doing <laughs> 12 and a half gallon batches and uh, throw out hosting like home day home brew parties and people coming out and barbecuing and brewing and then you know drinking the last brew days beers and uh, too many people are like you guys got to do something with this, you know, <laughs> especially Jared, too. So. Jared, you, I hear you have a very fine palate yeah. for craft yeah, beers. Yeah, it's him too, I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So if he says thumbs down, right, right. We, we toss it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, really, I mean, that was a lot of just years of research and development for us because we saved every recipe that we ever did. And, you know, we've got a stack of recipes like this from the homebrew days. And, and then just I mean, you wrote down like quantities, amount, oh, yeah. what type, yeah. where you got the grains, everything. And, yeah, additives and stars to the one you really yeah. like. Yeah, back yeah. from day one. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that's really. I mean, you. When did you become? I, I'm going to call it like a beer snob. For me, it was you know back in college. Yeah, it wasn't. Well, I'd say sophomore year of college, Josh who can't be here. He's the one that got me into it. For what was beer. your first craft beer Sierra that Nevada. you tasted? Sierra Nevada <laughs> IPA. And I'm like, oh my God, husband. I can't even down this. It was like <laughs> terrible. And then I was like, yeah, try this, try this. And it just, you start building that palate and now IPAs are one of my favorite styles, so. What about you? Yeah. What was your you know, aha moment with craft beer. Uh, it was a similar story. Josh brought Sierra Nevada this down. Josh, I think we were, he's the we were at the same man. party. So I think he's he, like, really good. Yeah, I guys. think he, it, it really, when he was down in Columbus. So that scene yeah. down there is how he got into it. And then he's like, you guys got to, you know, get into this. First hits free. Yeah, right. <laughs> After yeah. that, it's, it's all on you guys. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? What, what do you enjoy? Are you um, also an IPA? I'm more into sours now. This uh, is great. Now, what is this called? The peel. So that's a that's a Berliner Weiss actually. Oh, that's, okay. Um, we call that one a Blitz Weiss. This is the first time we brewed it actually. Mm. But me yeah. like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're they're really like tart, just kind of sour. Um, they're really refreshing in the summertime, which I I really now, like. Now, do you find like so seasonally? Seasonal. You right. you won't make this in the winter. We might. Will you? But like it's really small quantities, yeah. just here and there. And there's a lot like I'll make a lot more of that in the summertime. Wintertime we do stronger beers, stouts, just heavier body beers, something that you know just kind of keeps you warm. And these beers. The sours, the IPAs, the wheats, those are all summers, just something to easy drinking, clean your palate. Are those grains easier to get in the summer? Do you see that there's like the seasonal offerings that when you where you go to buy the ingredients? Not necessarily the no. grains. It's the hops are more of a challenge to get and specific hops. I mean there's thousands of varieties of hops out there. Do summer, you grow your own? Summer, we do. We do. Uh, we're you part use them? partners with the <laughs> Knucklehead Hop Farm out of Letonia. Oh, really? That, uh, we've got roughly Love the name, Knucklehead. <laughs> 70 plants in. We're putting another 200 in. This 50, summer? 250 plants in this okay. year. And how long does it take to harvest them from when you start growing so them? So typically the first, first year. two years are kind of just Like grapes low. almost. Yeah. But then years like three, four, five, six, that's like your best harvest years for hops. Birdfish, tell me about the name and the logo, where it came from. Yeah, so as we were home brewers, we actually had the name Birdfish Brewing Company <laughs> as home brewers. And uh, so being kind of central to Pittsburgh and then, you know, with Youngstown State, 
the penguin is kind of a bird fish. Yeah, where the our kind of mascot logo kind of came from, part of our logo. Mm -hmm. And you think of a penguin, it's kind of like a bird, kind of like a fish. So it was probably a drunken night. That <laughs> that's came up. But it so, sounded but really yeah. no, I think it makes right. sense. Yeah. Yeah, so Josh, he, uh, you know, worked with the logo and, you know, our main logo's got three penguins for the three owners. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, iceberg is a representation of where we're from, Ohio, so. So who is going to uh, be the eloquent one and, and toast? Oh. Birdfish. So He's the eloquent guy. Oh, okay. You're elegant <laughs> and eloquent. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Greg. Yeah, so here's to uh, Birdfish Brewing Company for the first year and a half of business to many more years getting through this expansion project. So hopefully by the end of this year and rolling into 2018 to many more brews and many more enjoyable beers for everybody in the valley to taste, so. Slime job, aye aye. The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.